My name is Mimic Tear, and welcome back to Elden Ring. I'm basically a Mimic Tear of Blythe. Like, that's... That's the plan, at the absolute least. Please, sir, may I have the rest of your outfit? It looks incredible. Oh, actually, mm, I kind of don't want the rest of Blythe's outfit. Here's the big reason. Because most of the time, you get someone's outfit after they die. <laughs> don't want him to die. He, he's my best friend. I don't believe we can have enough here. Oh, it's going to be an absolute squeaker if we do. Oh, maybe, maybe. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I think that's a level up for us. It is, and it's not even slightly a squeaker. It's a well-oiled wheel. So returning to the typical path, we're looking for jump off here, and then we've got this giant open area. In fact, we've also got this, which we can drop back down on, I believe. But I should be prepared for the ancestors. You know what I actually might do? Just thematically for this area, I'm gonna get my own ancestral follower. If I can summon. <laughs> Which I imagine I can. Right? You gotta be able to. Right? Come on. Ah, a tree is really there that I couldn't even see. Well spotted, I guess. Hmm. Nascent butterflies, we'll take those two. Just knowing them to be relatively rare. You feel like an alarm stag. Like you tell everyone else. Really? Is that actually the mechanic? Hang on. You run back in the other area, no one else is on alert? Okay, no, it's fine. Well, I'm sorry about this, bud. What, sorry, I'm sorry about this, bud, is what I meant. Yep. Wait, hang on. Oh, I'd already written off that these were going to be lightable sconces. But this one definitely looks like it would take a uh, take a light quite effectively. Okay. So what are we going to access with that? I need to know what it lights up. I guess I might just eventually find out as we explore the area. Something with multiple sconces that only has one lit. Ah, or two. These ones seem significantly less defended than the other ones downstairs. Man, the wildlife here is dense. Get so much if I wanted to. And I don't want to. That's the whole reason that I'm leaving them alive. It's definitely not that I keep missing them every single time. It's kind of embarrassing. It's definitely not that. Ah, okay. Well, we now know the temple that they're lighting up. I really feel bad taking out the ancestral warriors. They just seem like they were here vibing and... I decided to turn up and ruin everything. What? Teach me. You absolutely have to teach me. I have them too. Wait, I'm not wearing them. What? I forgot. I don't know when I forsook that. Black Wolf Mask. Oh, but it's blind. It's, oh, no. It's so much about poise. What? More than half of our poise is this helmet. All right. 
I'm keeping it, but oh god. <laughs> can someone alter it so that I can wear both? That is like, can I get Bok to use his seamster skills and help us out here? Come on. Beautiful singing in this area, which we of course know means danger. There is no beauty without danger. Because uh, there's at the very least the danger of losing that beauty. Uh, yo. Can I make my way up behind that tree, Fanka? I'm just going to completely ignore all of them because none of them are ranged. None of you are free of Malay. Oh, yes. The loot. You know, there's six different sconces in this area where I have to light. I don't think I can go through the entire area just kind of like mind sweeping these fools around. That seems like a capital B.I. bad idea. Ooh. Is this Formic Rock over here? Formic Rock. Interesting. I'll have a bit more of a read of that in the future. Is that actually one of the ancestral warriors up here singing? No, you appear to be waving a horn of some kind. The singing appears to be coming from the complete opposite direction. Side of grace. <gasps> Thank you. It's exactly what I wanted, needed, and asked for. Very kind of you. Ah, we can see those forms all still pulling themselves towards the throne. We've seen those forms pulling themselves towards an occupied throne one time in the past, and that was under. Ac wait, hang on. That's actually not. Wait, is it in this area or not in this area? I think it might be the other. Yes, yes, yes. It was in Ainsel River. In this area, the Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella, there are a bunch of very, very similar forms to this. Is the name meant to be written on each of those? Uh, I guess that calls itself Ainsel when you scroll out. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's the descent back down into the other area if we want it, but let's stick here for the moment. Especially after having reset the aggro of all of these enemies. No, the singing is sounding very loud in these. Maybe the singing does just come out of those horns, though. Oh, that angers them. Oh, I like that weapon, though. Want to donate that to the cause? Neither of you? Come on. Be generous. Look, either you give me that weapon and it can continue to draw blood from living souls, or you don't, and it can't. Do you want that weapon to live on? Oh, Red Wolf of Radagon. And a bunch more items in the area. I mean, I don't really have the ability to summon here. Oh, no, wait, I immediately do, just moving a couple spaces over. Okay, let's get an ancestral follower myself. Wait. Literally, I moved forward a couple spaces and then the warrior is like, nope, can't have me anymore. I guess I moved too far away from the summon radius. Oh, 
Are you actually doing any workout? Okay, cool. Oh, I think they're firing past me at Radagon. Or not. Oh, actually, maybe they are trying to fire at the Radagon. Yep. Seems like I was the one missing it. Oh, good lord! While I was in midair! Oh, buddy. Butt slam. Butt slam! Let me butt slam! <laughs> Careful with butt slam. Please! It's so important to me. Thank you. Especially considering we just did it and didn't really actually pay for itself there. Maybe it shouldn't be so important. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, buddy. I really didn't learn your attack patterns at all when we were fighting. <laughs> Just went entirely for the invalidation play, I guess. There we go. Oh, yeah, of course I'm not going to be able to respond to that. I did know that after they approached with that... I don't have the distance for a response myself. Yep. That was just daft. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have continued trying to follow up on any of those strikes. To be fair, I was mostly out of Crimson Flask and mostly out of a friend as well. Take a small sip of the life-giving caffeine. <sighs> Now, avenge ourselves. I mean, I honestly don't need the, the Red Wolf of Radagon there to die, but also maybe I do. I don't think the last Red Wolf of Radagon respawned in the Carrion uh, graveyards. Though I can't entirely recall. Wait a second. Reviving at the stake of Marika actually revived me further away from what I wanted there. Get him. I was gonna grease this weapon up something good. I think I'm only losing 5,000... Uh, runes on the other side of this at the moment as well, so feeling a lot more comfortable just waddling around thumping these first. Ooh. Jump, jump, jump! Thump, thump, thump. Paddle. Get him! Jump. Oh no! Really wanted that to actually stagger one of these other ones too. Oh boy. Jump them! Oh, only just made it out of that one. Thought they're ragdolls, we're gonna go fly off into space together. Okay, we'll also make our way around this corner now that we have this area cleared. Kukri, in case I want to try and bleed something at a distance. Let's also take a Flask of Wondrous Physic, I think, here. Let's 
going to require a Flask of Cerulean Tears if I want to go for a summon, and I really will want to go for a summon again. Just considering the difficulty last time. There's one, two... Ah, uh, okay. She's buffing them. Damn it. Honestly, unless she's buffing their poise, I really don't actually need to care. <gasps> she heals them extremely effectively. That's what's going on there. Again, just in case you have a unique drop if I do it enough times or the right way. Certainly had a pretty unique drop in picking these back up for us there. Oh. Red Wolf of Radagon's in the other area. But this is another ancestor spirit y'all are praying around? Hmm. So badly want to get involved. I need to return to sweeping along the left. <sighs> we'll be back in good time, hopefully. Gosh, this whole area doesn't have the ability actually to summon yet. I don't know where the summoning pillar is. I really don't want to have to fight all those wolves at the same time as the Red Wolf of Radagon. That that would just be conceding to them, basically. It's it's too many enemies for you to fight at any one time with this weapon. And they all have fast attacks. Awful. Not possible. Oh no. It's fine. I guess the other ones are touring, but oh god. Okay. You and I, buddy. Honestly, I I, I need to learn how to fight you. Yeah. So, the big thing is, I really can't afford to actually block manually any of your attacks. I need to just be able to run and roll through them, otherwise I will never have the ability to respond to you. For that reason, all of your attacks remove basically all of our stamina if we dodge them. I need to back roll through some of your hits so that I can put myself in a better position for actually striking you after you've attacked. So like roll back here and then jump hit, things like that. Ugh. And it's just stay on your side there for a while. Pretty good. Hyper aggressive in the spells at the moment, that's a launch. Okay, still don't know how to deal with that attack. No! I got baited! This is the second time it's done me like that! Red Wolf Radagon, please, it's been 18 minutes. <laughs> you can't hold me hostage. <sighs> We're fine. Let's teleport a wee bit closer. How are we reviving at this stake, America? It's so far. We bit more of that eternal juice. Ooh, every time I drink, every time I sup from that cup, I'm feeling significantly more bolstered in my mental faculty. Soon, even the corpses of Einstein and Tesla combined won't be able to match my intellect. Because they're dead. And it's very difficult to think whilst dead. Hello. Let's get a bit further away from those wolves so I feel safe here. Okay. Okay. Now it's just you and me. Come on. Initiate attack. Roll back. Throw. Jump. Hit. Get him. Roll. Roll. Now, with this attack, I should be able to get myself enough distance to go back for these. Great. 
get some endurance back, jump and roll back. Jump, hit. Okay, those individual great sword. Ah, that was bad on my part. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, honestly, that's like a faint strike on the enemy's part there. And I keep falling for it every time. All right, bud. Oh, I can see the wolves in the distance. Oh, wrong direction for the roll. Oh, buddy. That attack gets me every time. No! Why did I cue that attack? No! I rolled! I promise you, I rolled. The game might not have said it, but I did. Please trust me. <sighs> you need to die. If this enemy respawns, I'm going to feel so foolish. This easily could have been us a couple episodes ago fighting the Crucible Knight in Night, Ski uh, Night Sky on Seizing. <laughs> the Belfry. Oh, it absolutely could have been us. What a much more embarrassing position we would have been in that uh, alternative. I'll focus exclusively on that, not <clears throat> the reality of the current situation, please. We're doing so much better than how we could be doing if we were doing theoretically worse. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> poison this armor. I got some Bessiel Vitality on. You want to cast spells? Let's cast spells. Ah, oh, I can't run around that one apparently. As much as I would love to. So it looks like the second bite is actually an optional follow-up. The one that I'd previously called a faint attack. This is an extremely suboptimal weapon to be trying to use for this enemy, I will say that. Like, extremely slow, really needs pretty large opportunities to get good damage in, relies very heavily on its poise damage isn't particularly stable when guarding. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Getting styled on by this wolf. Please. Uh, I promise you. I only want to kill you. Why won't you let me do that? Come on. I, look, you don't know. Maybe heaven's fun and real. Come on. Die. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just try it on for size. Come on. You don't know you won't like it until you try it. Have you had a spoonful? Radagon's Red Wolf, have you had a spoonful yet? Three more spoonfuls of death and then you can go away from the table, okay? Oh, no. Come on. Jump and thump. It's really difficult to find an opportunity to attack here that doesn't immediately unveil another opportunity for them to attack us back. Okay, rolling through that is a thing we do early, if we want to do it successfully at all. My god, being directly behind them there was incredible. No unique drop, so, uh... <laughs> I don't think it's promising. That's definitely a Crimson one, but is this a spell or Cerulean Blasts? Mm, 
think it's the flasks. Okay. Don't think we have that many more light. Is that more Formic? Yes. Let's read Formic Rock again so that we get a little bit more information about the relationship between the areas that form it. Formic, Formic, Formic. There it is. Sorry, Root Resin. Formic Rock. Found near Azel and other places where giant ants live. Got it. Uh, solidifying giant vent, ant venom. Highly acidic material for crafting items. Cool. Well, that might be one of the things I wanted to hear least <laughs> about it, but okay. The relationship between the areas is uh, the ants that you really don't like. Enjoy. The letter summon back in the other area. Okay, okay. I do love how they just live in harmony with the nature here that, like, is extremely disharmonious in general. Like, in most situations when I'm fighting someone in, you know, a Souls game, I feel like I'm in, you know, the relative right. Uh, here I absolutely feel wrong. <laughs> I don't know what they did wrong yet. Shame at first! <laughs> I have the, the Ryman? The Fur Ryman, I think? From the all parallel, uh, the all palace versions of y'all. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, there we go. There's the fur Ryman, Shaman Furs. Worn by ancestral so uh, follower Shamans. The ancestral followers live a distance from the Erd Tree. Keep their distance from the Erd Tree. Awaiting new bards, awaiting new bards. They are certain to sprout from their very flesh and indeed their souls. Okay, so it's literally just slightly different translation. Keep a distance, certain. Live a distance, certain. Live a distance, certain. Live a certain distance. What? <laughs> My brain is spoonerizing things before I even have the chance to understand them in the first place. That's not how that one's supposed to work. It only works as a spoonerism if you also know the truth. Uh, enchanted shot? That's probably going to be magic as well as mighty shot, basically, for uh, a bow. Unlikely to be relevant to us again considering we refuse to level int. Ooh, looks like there is actually a way out to there. Let's check it in a wee bit. Until then, though. Let's pop that light on myself. Continue hugging the border. So we start seeing some jellyfish in the area as well. Even more going further away. I mean, unless they're red, they're not aggressive to me. I don't know if they become red based on you know your proximity to them, whether or not you've dealt damage to any of them. I imagine that definitely turns them red. Uh, but I don't know what their full set of trigger conditions is. A mottled necklace plus one. Wait, so was I supposed to have cleared all of the belfries way earlier? Because I'm getting things that just outlevel them very quickly. Uh, greatly increases immunity, robustness, and focus. Otherwise, same description. Um, I don't think I have all of the sconces lit for this. It's nice to pick up that item. I can also see there's a glove whip down there I'm going to need to get in the future. Let's turn on a dime. Uh, I don't know if I should take this risk. Ah, it worked. It's fine. Hello on grounds. Fall down to here. There we go. Hopefully that's 
considered stable ground. Looks like it was. Yeah, okay. I'm missing one sconce at this point. It's definitely going to be relatively central to the map. You know what? It might actually be where all of the other ones were performing that kind of summoning. Yes, up here. This would make a bunch of sense. Yep. Makes a bunch of sense because it is a bunch of sense. Let me get a Crimson Flask and an Ancestral Follower on my side just so they know that we are okay. I'm not wearing the horns at the moment, but someone still is. That really got one of them. What? Oh no, I didn't have any stamina. Stamina, I mean, didn't have any mana, so that didn't do any damage. I'm gonna buff my weapon. Roll, 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 roll! Roll! Thank you, and... Uh. Oof. I thump, we thump, we all... Thump pretty hard. Oh, yeah, of course, they've got the healing going on at the moment as well. Should keep an eye on that. Characters may be further away from death than they appear. Sorry. Oh, you can even hear the singing quieten in the valley. Oh, I don't like that. Shining horn up. Worn by ancestral follower shamans, horns that signify. What? Horns with buds that also shine in our ideal ceremonial items for ancestral worship strengthens the ancestral infant's head. I don't have an ancestral infant's head. Is that the weapon that the shamans use? That would... Oh. Okay, that's a bit... That's a bit... Oof. Just a bit oof, you know? Power gathers somewhere in horned remains. Um, I think I should probably just go to the ancestral wood and then go over. For our ancestral spirit boss fight. Also, I think again, I will try and use the ancestral follower specifically. The ancestral uh, spirit fight here. Again, just the thematic fit. If it becomes particularly uh, pressing, oh, I don't know, maybe my grip on theme can loosen a little. But let's at least start with it here. Hello, Horn Grounds. I'm also totally not against summoning NPCs for their storylines. But sadly, I don't expect I'll find one in here. Quite sadly, in fact, I would have loved to. Alright. Oh no! The early ground slam! That's so bad! Oh, am I even going to be able to summon in this fight? Yeah, I am totally able to summon in this fight. Okay, Regal Ancestor's Spirit. I have to drink my Cerulean Blast early to do that. Let me put the Magic Grease on that weapon as well. No, 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 no. No, you need to come for me. What? That was just a teleport away? Okay, but what do you do from distance? Why do you need that much distance? I love that our archer is just constantly pot shotting him here. Oh, way too early on that roll. Really, unfortunately, I keep putting myself in this position where I'm not getting any 
effect out of a lot of the stuff I'm doing. Okay, get a bit of my stamina back. Roll forward jump and strike. Roll, no. Bit late on that. Should I be killing any of the spirit animals? One, two. Roll early, there we go, okay. Jump, thump. I know that's... Yeah, I know there's the third strike on that. So I knew I had to get back to safety. Roll and jump. Thump. Perfect. That'll finish it. <laughs> what? No way! You were a demigod? Who? <laughs> Who? What? <laughs> um. Huh? Remembrance of the regal ancestor spirit hewn into the earth tree. The power of its namesake can be unlocked via the yeah. Ancestral spirits exist as a phenomenon beyond the purview of the earth tree. Life sprouts from death as it does from birth. Such is the way of living. Beyond the purview of the earth tree. We, we're made initially to believe that the Earth Tree is kind of monolithic. That there is nothing beyond the purview of the Earth Tree. And that is uh, something that we found challenged a little bit here with the Halig Tree. Found challenged increasingly as the game told us more about the, uh, the two factional capitals, the capital of magic, I guess, the capital of Full Moon and the Carrion Royal Family uh, versus the capital of the Air Tree and, and Lane Dell. I... I... I think instantly. Absolutely instantly. I need to go back to the round table hold. I need to see what this weapon can give us. Because... If anything is going to have something ancestral, something barbarian, something bestly. God, if it isn't going to be this remembrance. The winged great horn. The soul stifler. It is a great axe. It is standard. Ah! Restores FB upon defeating enemies. Item cut from the horns of the regal ancestor spirit. A number of new growths bud from the ancestor-like horns of the fallen king, each glowing with light. Thus does new life grow from death, and from death one obtains power. The great winged horn, uh, or winged great horn rather, a unique horn in which the shape of ancestral spirits fiercely dwells. This large wing-shaped specimen is wielded as a weapon of spirit worship. In the ancestral spirit worshiping faith, these are considered envoys' wings, made to reap the lives of beings which experience no sprouting. Unique skill Soul Stifler raise the Great Horn's wings to summon a soul-sapping miasma. Enemies in the area will be temporarily will temporarily suffer reduced defense. I I don't know how to tell you that I think this is what we need to do. That's got to level with somber smithing stones as well, so I've got to have the ability immediately to pump that up a bunch. Uh, it requires 20 decks, so I could use Godric's rune and a rune arc just to be able to wield this for a while. I'm totally comfortable doing. Stop! Thank you for doing you. Alas, you, lo you no longer mean anything to me. Somber Smithing Stone 6 we are missing. Alright. Now I need to go test this weapon. Uh, I mean, the first thing I need to do to test the weapon is, is pop a rune arc. Ooh, we haven't seen Rajira in a while as well. Let's get this in our hand too. 
There's C scaling now. Upgraded. Ah, uh, yeah. Honestly, kind of expected this. Regia's bell bearing as well as his outfit. Let's have a look at those. Hang on, there's more. Regia's letter. Interesting. Uh, your bell bearing will be down here with another bell bearing I need to hand it as well. Uh, Regia the sorcerer's bell bearing found upon his parish flesh. That's it. Then for equipment, you dropped full outfit. Spellblade's pointed hat. Glintstone sorcerer Regia's pointed hat. A sign of a heretical practitioner. Strengthens Glintstone sorcery skills. Regia spent his entire life behaving with utter detachment. No one noticed the anger, grief, regret, or fear that existed along with it. Glintstone Sorcerer graced with an intricate aristocratic decoration. Strengthens Glintstone Sorcery skills. Wow, the whole outfit strengthens Glintstone Sorcery skills? Ooh, man. Is there like a like find and kill Regier like build? I've been thinking a lot about the kinds of builds that you can make very, very quickly in this game. And one thing is if you get the uh the the stone sword key as your starting gift, you can go to the fringe folk hero's grave as you're going through the early game with the stranded graveyard and stuff like that. And you can pick up the dragon communion seal. And because the dragon, the Church of Dragon Communion is just over here, very, very quickly, you can get like a draconic build online. It, there is a reason that a lot of my mind is dominated by thinking of, oh, actually, also I should turn this marker off. There's a reason a lot of my mind is dominated by thinking of like, hmm, how would you start a new build in this area? What what kind of things would you go for if you were, you know, for instance, trying to play heavily into the dragon mechanics that well, would into the game? I don't know. For what reason someone might be <coughs> constantly thinking about that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe a consideration of things in the future. I don't know. I do not know. I'd like to do some challenge runs on Twitch for this, I think. I'm not certain, like, a single YouTube video would be the correct outlet for it. Although maybe an edited one at the end of a Twitch run. No clue. That's that's all hearsay for the future, though. Here and now for the future, we need to go and find somewhere I can just swing this with reckless disregard for the enemies in the area. Gear Lake North. Let's go here. I wonder if I'm a match for any of the dragons yet. Let's look at the attack animations of this weapon. We can also start thinking about... God, hang on. Literally, they're both great axes. Give me a second. Give me just one second. Just one second, please. Just a, just a, just a hot second. Just, just a, just a hot second here. <laughs> Is that how we want to go? Are we a double great axe pop there? <laughs> Uh, okay, so, direct comparisons on their damage. Each of these is being wielded in one hand at the moment. As a result, they will have similar scaling. So, uh, 234 plus 215, unfortunately, I recognize, is going to be 449, which is already significantly higher than the Winged Great Horn is proposing for us. With three, ooh, 368. Oh, man, that hurts. I also can't put an Ash of War on the Winged Great Horn in order to change its type. I don't believe. Yeah, that makes absolute sense that I wouldn't be able to. However, the potential of the Winged Great Horn is a lot higher because it scales with Dex as well as scaling with Strength. So it has two stats it can scale off of. But am I seriously going to be quality increasing my decks here? Maybe. I don't know. I could actually just go back and rebirth to give myself a bunch more decks to make this a, a primary weapon for us again. Let's two-hand it and have a look. Okay, so it's a four strike on the lights. Literally exact same for the heavies. 
Except I think the second isn't a thump on the uh, on the anchor. Faint attack. Let's go for a rolling strike. Rolling. Okay. Let's try the jump attacks. Yeah, basic. Basic as well. <sighs> this ability is going to have to be really, really interesting. Otherwise, this is going to become another one of the weapons that I upgrade and then never get to use because it's just worse than the one I'm using. I don't even know if that affected any of these. I guess maybe I should strike something, cast that, and then strike them again? Um, okay, let's bait the knight out. Hello. Seriously? You're not, not even going to pursue? I guess you recognize what's up. You know I'm just here to test this weapon. Come on. Three twenty-seven. Three seventy-six. As a matter of pride, I'm going to continue to wield this for a period of time. I don't know exactly how long. I think we have a long, long overdue task here. The Dragon Burnt Ruins, eh? I wonder what did that. Spoiler alert. Might have been a dragon. There it is, over in the distance. Hello? Can you introduce yourself? No? Oh my god, do you even not have a name? I can't believe this is gonna work. Never mind. Flying dragon and heal. There we go, that's what I was expecting. As we made our way through there a couple episodes ago, it was uh, alerted a couple episodes ago in real time. This is recorded with a pretty, pretty long backlog at the moment. I was alerted that maybe I want to spend a little bit more time here. Uh, oops. Now, you are called the Flying Dragon. And you did fly in, so I know you can. Seems to have relatively low health for a dragon as well. Roll directly over that tail. Strike in the head as well. Wait, wait. Oh! Get to the head! Get to the head, please! That'll do it. Dragon down. Great dragonfly head there. Another great dragonfly head for our troubles. And a dragon heart. A new draconic power is available at the Dragon Communion Cathedral. It's out to Limgrave. We checked that ruin fiercely. Just seeing if there's anything else in this area as well. I also might, might go and check myself against the other dragon who was guarding the glintstone key. Hello. Hey, let's just make him way through. Let's drag the runes further up. Yeah, I think we're fine. Because this area just goes back out to somewhere we already swept across for item pickups. Very long time ago. Well, I say all the item pickups, not all of them evidently, but there is a smoothing stone right there. 
again, another thing that I've been looking at is like, where is there like a nice density of early smithing stones? Like if, <gasps> artist, I didn't even see him before, but thank you. Incantations, in incantation scarab. Slightly reduces the EP cost of incantations, but increases the damage taken. These scarabs roll clumps of incantations during their labors. As the scarab approaches death, it rolls its rolled treasure and stretches its wings wide for the long journey to the home nest. I figure if I want to try and get a feel for this great axe, and I recognize that it is, you know, down on damage, that'll matter a lot less if I'm stalking these early areas, just looking for things that I haven't completed. Uh, excuse me? Looking for... <laughs> looking for ups, please? Thank you? Excuse me? Can I not get atop that? <gasps> a standing nomad. You must be the new tarnished. Beautiful work. Felling that dragon. Oh. And as such, there's something you might like to know. The heart you brought back. It's used in dragon communion. If you should find yourself overcome by hunger for the heart, yearning for its strength, then seek the decrepit church on the little island off the western coast. Great tip. Already seen it. Who are you? You must not forget, though, those who partake in dragon communion will one day shed their humanity, their hunger for dragon, their yearning. Only worsens until the floodgates burst. Unleashing eternal torment. The strength of a mighty dragon. Magnificent. But deadly. It's no surprise that dragon communion is ruinous. That would make sense, given the existence of the Cathedral of Dragon Communion out here in Kaled. Uh, and also the implications that dragon magic has led to the downfall of those who'd studied. You must not forget those who burn their hunger for until the flood gives strength. I want to see that character again. I'm not certain where I would though. Guild Lake South, so we've seen that one prior. Hmm. Other early area enemies and bosses. Um, it's it's difficult because I wasn't using the marker system back here. I don't remember anything that I just saw and turned away from. Nomadic mansion down in that distance. Further down the tombs would as well. Tombs with catacombs of the cave. And there's the poison over in that area. There's a lot of revisiting of areas we could do. Revisiting of especially, like, key areas. Um. Hmm. We could go to the War Master's Shack at night time. Another thing that has been a little hinted at. Appreciate it. It's daytime. Uh, uh. We must be the fighters in the nighttime. Uh, uh. The champions of the sun. Eh? Reload the area? Maybe? Yep. That'll do it. Hello. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have just stood there and let him give me the business. Hey, 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 hey! At least hold the way. I I have a rune arc equipped. I can't die. <laughs> I figured we were in for an early game fight. Hang on. Seriously? 
a lot of my actions are just not occurring. <laughs> God damn it. I think... I think some combination of the attack pattern as well as my movement got me stuck in between two trees on unstable ground. And so anytime I told the game to do something, it was like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're in the air, my man. Get to the ground before you ask another question. You know what? I've just seen the time. Let's check out that boss fight at the start of the next episode. Until then, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Elden Ring. Series playlist up in the top left. YouTube's recommendation down below. Stream past the names of the people who are generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays that are above the $10 tier. And a special thanks this episode to David. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.